Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today's clip will be a little bit different than the ones we normally post, where I'm typically looking at a drone and comparing it to other drones on the market, or maybe I found some cool new technology that I'm really excited about that I'd love to talk about on the channel. Those type of clips are really focused on that one particular subject. This clip today, and hopefully others like it, will be a little bit of a broader conversation about technology in general, and I'm going to cover a lot of different topics. And I'm hoping to do a couple of these each month to sort of give you an idea of what we're working on, what we found that we think is cool, things we're going to be reviewing on the channel and I would love to get feedback from all the viewers out there on other things that you're curious about. So if there's another piece of gear you want us to review or there's some technological thing that you don't quite understand that you think we do a pretty good job of explaining, we're more than happy to cover that because one of the things we really want to do with the channel, and this has been since the beginning of when we started the channel, is we want to respond to viewers. We look at this, this vehicle, this YouTube vehicle, as sort of a two-way street to sort of explain things we think are interesting, but we really love when viewers send us comments and questions about technology technology so we can answer those and sort of make your life a little bit better around the gear. So definitely drop your comments below. Let me know if you like the format or if you have things you want us to cover on the channel. And I'll definitely put that uh, down on the list and we'll definitely get to it. So hopefully we're going to do a couple of these each month. So I'd like to start off all of these clips that we're going to do like this with sort of corrections, right? I mean, I put a lot of content out there and I'm pretty sure that I've got it right when I put the clip together, but every now and then uh, I goof and I goofed in a big way on this trust test. So I put a clip up a couple weeks back when the trust test was announced from the FAA. Now, if you didn't see that clip, the FAA has decided as part of their mandate that they've got to have a basic test for anybody flying a drone to take. And again, I mentioned in that clip, you can't fail this test. You get a chance to take it multiple times. It's a multiple question test. And if you miss an answer, you can pick another answer. And then if you get that wrong, you can pick another answer. So it really is a very, very simple test that I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the clip, I could take my dunking bird up there, sort of in the Homer Simpsons vein, put it in front of a keyboard and have it keep tapping the return key and eventually pass the test. But anyway, the trust test is easy. Take the test. It's going to take you about 25 minutes if you're really focused to get it done and get it out of the way. And then that's forever and you're ready to fly your drone. Anyway, I misspoke at the beginning of that clip and I actually did some research on it and it was very confusing on the FAA site about who had to take the test. And I made the mistake of saying, if you're flying a drone that's over 250 grams, you have to take the test. If it's under 250 grams like this guy, you don't have to worry about the test. And that's wrong. I'm totally wrong on that. And I got a couple questions after I posted the clip from viewers saying, hey, I thought everybody had to take it. So I said, all right, let me reach out to the FAA. So I sent him an email, a few people over there that I talked to on a regular basis. And they said, no, everybody has to take the test. So make sure you mention that. I did pin a comment, but I wanted to clear that up today. So everybody that's flying a remote control drone today or helicopter or any kind of technology, that's going to be put aloft. You got to take the test and pass it. And again, it's a no-brainer, so no big deal there. All right, the next thing I wanted to update you on is we did a clip a couple weeks ago about the Xeno Mini Pro, which looks like a very, very interesting quad from Hubson. Um, I ordered one the day it was released. I've been waiting patiently, like a lot of you have, to get it. There have been a lot of dates that have been moving around. Originally, it was the beginning of June, then the middle of June, then the end of June, then the middle of July. Well, it's the middle of July, so I got a little frustrated and finally sent them an email and said, look, I've ordered this. I'm a good customer. I paid for it the day you guys released it. What's going on with the drone? And I got a really quick response back from them and they said, because the drones are being shipped with different capacities on board. Now that's something about the Hubson that's different than like a Mini 2 is there's no micro SD card slot on it to add extra storage. So when you buy that drone, you buy it with 64 gigs of storage or 128 gigs of storage, and that's pretty much it. Now 128 gigs of storage is plenty, even 64 is plenty, but those different models have different built-in storage, right? So when I got the email back, they said, look, we've had a chip shortage. Everybody knows about the chip shortage, I get that, but the models are being released differently. So the 64 gig model is delayed. The first shipment coming in is the 128 gig model. So I said to him, well, I don't want to wait until the end of August. So how do I upgrade the 64 gig to the 128 gig? And he sent me a, a link and I basically paid the difference in the price and I've been upgraded to the 128 gig. So if you have the 64 gig ordered from Hubson, it's probably a couple of weeks delayed behind the 128 gig. I know for sure that the 128s are hitting the shore uh, in New York, which I live in New Jersey, so it should be a quick ship, this week. So it's uh, the 15th, I think, it's landing in New York. I hope to have it by the weekend. The minute I get it, we'll be outside flying it like crazy. All of us can't wait to get our hands on it. And we'll be doing comparisons with that and the Mini 2 and the Mini and a bunch of other drones out there. So stay tuned to the channel on that, because I think that... 
I think that Xeno Mini Pro has got a lot of potential to be a very interesting drone in this sub 250 gram space, and I know a lot of you are excited about it. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the Mini 2 in particular, because a few weeks ago I posted a clip talking about the latest firmware update, which directly addressed, as one of the updates did, directly addressed the uh, draining of the battery. So that automated draining of the batteries that if you kept them in the hub, they didn't automatically discharge like they're supposed to. Because again, LiPo batteries, they're not good to keep them fully charged and it's horrible to let them drain all the way down. So you want to keep them somewhere in that middle zone and they're supposed to auto discharge. So if you don't use them for a while and you put them back in the hub at 100%, after a couple of days, they should actually start to discharge. And the way they do that is they'll put a load across the battery, they'll get a little bit warm, and they'll drain those electrons out to get them down to around 75% of their capacity. When it was first released, that didn't happen. And a lot of us were concerned about that because if you keep them fully charged, the chemistry of a light bulb battery starts to break down over time. It's like winding a spring all the way to its full tension and letting it sit there. The fatigue on that spring in that wound position, just like a fully charged battery, is a really bad thing. So you'll destroy the batteries pretty quickly. So DJI rushed out an update for it and they said that it cured the problem. And I've been testing it pretty extensively over the last couple of weeks and I did it three or four times where I fully charged the batteries. And what I did was leave one in the drone, one outside of the hub, and one inside the hub. Now, if you left it outside of the hub and outside of the drone, it would auto discharge on its own. It was only when it was in the drone or in the hub that it didn't self discharge. What I found, and this is over six or seven tests over the last couple of weeks, is that weirdly, um, if it's in the drone, it'll discharge. If it's in the hub, it'll discharge. But if it sits on its own, I'm not discharging batteries and I don't know what's going on there. So it's like they flipped the script that if you leave it alone outside of the drone or the hub, it doesn't discharge. Now, I'd love some feedback to see what your findings were as well. The other thing I found was the discharge rates are different between the hub and the drone. And I don't know why that is either. It seemed like when I had them in the hub, they went into auto discharge mode. They didn't do it after 48 hours. They did it after... 36, I'm sorry, uh, three days or four days later where they started the discharge cycle. So that, that discharge cycling is longer, which I think is okay because it gives you a couple of days at full charge to get back out and fly. But I was a little uh, weirded out by the fact that they did different discharge rates between the two. So I'll continue to test that. Once I finish that, I'll put a chart together and show you all the tests that I did and I'll put a clip and explain it. But just know now, my findings anyway, if you leave the batteries out of the hub and out of the drone, they're going to sit there fat, dumb, and happy, fully charged, which I don't think is a good thing. And I'll actually show that to you now, because this one was out of the out of the unit itself. I'll turn this on. And you can see this one is about 75%, and this one, fully charged. So that's a little alarming. Anyway, that's an update there. Another thing we're working on is we've had a ton of questions from new flyers about the Mini 2 drone and some of the basic procedures about how to calibrate the compass, how do I change the props, how do I do this, how do I do that. So we started a series called you know, Mini 2 Basics, I think I'm calling it, where we go through all of those different steps to sort of help new flyers understand that this can be a fairly intimidating technology out of the gate. And we wanted to give you an easy way to go through it. And I know DJI has done a wonderful job on their website of showing those procedures, but sometimes seeing a goofy guy like me sit down and change the props or do the compass calibration, it's just easier visually to see that. Because a lot of people are visual learners like me. I'm a visual learner. So stay tuned for the rest of those. I've got about four or five of those queued up that we're going to post over the next couple of weeks. The next thing I want to talk about is a couple of weeks ago, there was an announcement, uh, another DJI announcement, about um, the Pentagon clearing DJI drones for use in government agencies. Now, I took a lot of heat, I don't know, two years ago when I put a clip up, sort of asking the question, are DJI drones spying for China? Right? And everybody sort of gave me grief that was on the other side of that argument, saying, of course they are, it's a Chinese government, they spy on everybody, they're collecting a lot of data. And I looked at it from an engineering perspective and said, look, there's no way that you can gather that data and get it back to the mothership in China without using a lot of data. So how am I going to get that data there? It's not connecting to the internet unless it's connecting through your phone. So you would notice a big slog of data going out over your data network because you're getting charged for that. Plus, what good would that information be to them? You can get all that information from Google Maps or somebody with a cell phone near the site taking pictures. So it didn't make sense from a lot of different perspectives. Again, technically, that's the way I want to base everything is on facts, technical facts. And I, I came out and said, look, it's nonsense. They're not. Even if they could, you would know about it. And it would be a mess because even if everything worked perfectly and these things were connected directly to a Wi-Fi, I mean, to a cellular network where you could send tons of data, what good is it? Would they really count on me as a flyer just incidentally flying near something they needed to see? So it didn't make sense from a lot of perspectives. DJI had an independent study done on a couple of their drones by Kiva. Kiva said, nope, we didn't find anything major wrong with it. There's no, they're not touching servers in China. They're not sending information around. That wasn't good enough for the government. The government still said, oh, we're scared of these. Shut them down. And I've said for a while, 
I think that's pure protectionism. I think what you've got there is lobbyists going to the government, putting the fear in them that China's spying with these drones so that smaller American companies can build drones to compete because they're out of the competition at a much higher price, which isn't good for us. And what frustrated me most is I have no vested interest in DJI. I have no vested interest in any of these drones. But as a consumer, and certainly as an American, I want to be safe. And if, if the Forest Service can find a kid who's lost in the woods by using a drone, a Chinese-made drone, anybody's drone, I want him to do that. I don't want us to sort of have a kid lost out there because we're tied up in the politics of does it work, doesn't it work, especially when I know from an engineering perspective, there's no issues. So anyway, the long story short, which I've already made really long, is that they finally cleared two drones. So there's a Matrix 600, it was cleared, and the Enterprise version of the Mavic 2, which is probably the drone that most of those response agencies are using because it's got thermal imaging on it. It's got all kinds of cool technology built in. And again, just one final point, DJI tried to get the government to approve it, and the government came back and said, no, there's a lot of holes in there, we gotta clean up. And DJI said, tell us what you want, and we'll build an enterprise version. We'll build separate software for the enterprise version that locks everything, it sort of encrypts everything, and you have to have keys to open up pictures, like they did everything the government wanted, and they still shut it down. So it was frustrating. But anyway, the bottom line is that there was a, a study done as part of the uh, Center of Excellence. Kitty Hawk set up a Center of Excellence that does testing on a lot of different technologies. They brought in uh, Booz Allen to do this survey. They were an outside company that looked at it and said they found nothing. So the government said, okay, if you guys feel it's safe, we're gonna let it go. So good news, uh, you know, I'm gonna raise my hands in a victory salute. <laughs> I was right about it. It's not an issue at this point. So everybody out there that's saying, oh, the Chinese government, I agree with you. There's a lot of terrible things going on in China that I can't support, but if you think about it, most of your core technology has got some China technology inside of it. So you can't pick and choose your battles. If you're upset about this being a spy for China, think about your cell phones, your computer, your home automation systems, your cameras. Stop me when you've had enough. Your cars, everything in there has got a bit of China in it. So if they're spying, they're spying through a lot of other mechanisms. Anyway, that's enough about that. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is what we're working on for clips. I have a ton of technology we've been reviewing over the last couple of months. I've gotten a lot of requests lately for portable power stations, which are things you can take with you in the field to charge up your drones and charge up other gear. And I've done a couple of reviews already. I've got a beautiful one right here from EchoFlow that I'm going to be reviewing this week. I've been working on it over the last couple of weeks. Hopefully I have the clip posted this week. These kind of technologies allow you to take a whole lot of electrons with you out in the field with a ton of ways to sort of use that energy that's stored in there to charge a bunch of stuff. So the simple way is you're carrying a small portable uh, you know uh, uh, charger with you sort of a, a power bank if you will in your pocket you can charge your phone and a couple of other things these have a lot more electrons inside that can charge big things so this one in particular can charge through a courtesy outlet like a cigarette lighter outlet it's got AC uh, outlets on the side it's got USB on there QC PD everything you possibly want this is one you might take out for a weekend of camping but there's probably 12 others that I've got that we're reviewing comparing to each other that I'll be talking about on the channel that are smaller and more portable one in particular which actually blew my socks off is this one from Omnicharge and I can't get over how tiny this is it's got two USB-A ports on the front one of these is QC it's got a PD port on the side, which is a USB-C. Again, fast charge, fast charge. Two USB-A ports. One of them is a two and a half amp. The other one's a QC. And look over here, a full-size AC port. So what I'm carrying here, and a little bit more weight than, I don't know, an average tablet, maybe a little bit heavier, is a whole lot of power that I can charge everything in the field. So if you're out in the field and you want to recharge your drone batteries, well, guess what? <laughs> drone Valley's got chargers. And these chargers can plug right into the side of this and you can charge up to four batteries simultaneously off this little power bank. Now, depending on how depleted they are and how fully charged your power bank is, you'll get a couple of charges each. But it's a beautiful thing that if you're out for a long weekend and you're in the woods and you've got a backpack with you, this is in your backpack, plugs into a charger, all of a sudden you're recharging your batteries. So I'm gonna do a full review on this, a full review on this. We're working with both of these companies to try to develop a relationship where I can test a lot more of their products. We've got a lot of questions about that. Okay, another thing I wanna talk about is this Triple Tech tablet. I've had that for a couple of weeks and I've been testing the heck out of it. We've had a lot of people asking us, should I buy the smart controller from DJI? Should I get the new smart controller from Autel? I love them. I use them. I, I fly with the DJI smart controller all the time. I don't have the Autel one yet. I'm waiting for a, a test copy of that. I know Dobo's done a review of it. I hope to get one soon to test it. He beat me to the punch on that one. But anyway, I've been testing the smart controller forever. I've used that since the day it was released. I think it's a phenomenal product. But the downside of that is it's very specific to a brand of company. So the DJI one works with DJI. The Autel one works with Autel. I've been using uh, iPad minis, mini fives and mini fours as my tablet of choice. But I have to tell you, this triple tech tablet is insanely bright. It's got incredibly good battery life on it. It's based on Android. And what I like about it is 
I can move it between my Autel, my Anafi, my Skydio, my DJI. So having a multi-purpose device like this gives me a lot more flexibility and a lot more brightness, and it's insanely durable. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped this thing. I shouldn't even say this, but on concrete a couple of times, I'm fumbling to get it in the controller and dropped it on concrete, and it's not had an issue. It's worked perfectly ever since I got it. So I've got a full review coming to this. We're also working on some accessories for this to make it easier to mount it into a controller that's DJI, Autel, or Anafi that'll be sort of carbon-based 3D printed. So keep an eye on the channel for that. Then the last thing I wanted to talk about is we have a ton of new accessories that came in. So check the website if you need anything for your drones. We have a ton of the new chargers that just came in as well. We were kind of low on the stock of those because of the chip shortage, but we just got a massive uh, influx of these in and we have different versions for the Mini 2. This is for the Air 2. We've got them for the Mini and for the Mavic and all the rest of them. But a charger like this that can do multiple batteries simultaneously in addition to two USB-A ports on it means you can plug one device in, charge four of your batteries in parallel, so they're all charging at the exact same time, as well as a controller or the phone. Just makes things a whole lot simpler. And you know, I'm doing a clip on are they safe the bottom line is they're incredibly safe because the batteries themselves have charge uh, controllers in them that would limit the amount of current being sent to them. But in addition to that, there are charge controllers in here as well that handshake with the batteries to make sure it gets just the right amount of current and voltage to charge that battery safely. Anyway, we've got a lot of accessories on the website. If you want to support the channel, hit the link below and it'll send you there. Now below, I'm going to put links to all the stuff I've talked about, including the report that clears the DJI drones for flight in the US. And uh, I would really appreciate any comments below and things you want me to cover. If you hate this format, if I get enough hates, then maybe I won't do it again. But I like it because it gives me sort of a free form uh, conversation of things I'm talking about that are rattling around in my head that we're working on this week and next week to kind of keep you updated on the channel. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy flying.